Hey guys, this week we are talking about our trip to Aria, Paris balcony rooms, lower level gambling, and feature bets at craps. So stick around. This episode is sponsored by EA Sports College Football 2025. Learn more at easports.com. It's in the game. Welcome to the Crap Vegas Podcast. Vegas, here we come. Vegas. Here are your hosts, Chris and Josh. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 59 of the Crap Vegas Podcast. I am Chris. He's Josh. Josh, what's going on? Well, as I was telling Chris before we started rolling, it's a little lonely around our household because our daughter is off at camp. And so we're trying to figure out how to be, what, empty nesters for a little bit. And it's hard. I mean, you're getting to that age, Josh. Most people your age are already <laughs> empty nesters. Yes. But uh, it's, it's lonely around our house. So I was looking forward to seeing you and your happy smiling face today and reminiscing about Las Vegas and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, we got a lot to talk about on this episode, Josh. And even better than that, we have a special giveaway to announce for this episode. Yes, we do. I'm excited. Are you going to do that at the end? Here's what I'll say about it so far, Josh. You may want to stick around to the end of this episode as we are going to be giving away a copy of EA Sports College Football 2025 for free to a listener. That is pretty awesome. I was hoping Chris would give it to me, but he said I had to go buy one. So I did. <laughs> you know what? I paid for mine. <laughs> You can pay for yours. I got the deluxe edition. It was a hundred dollars. I'm I'm eligible to be playing right now, but instead of playing, which is what I really want to do, I'm You're on here recording with you. So, I mean, the things that we give up in life just to make this thing happen. So, speaking of EA Sports, Chris, did you hear the the national anthem from the All Star Game last night? I was going to ask you that. <laughs> I didn't know if I wanted to save it for the end of the episode or the beginning. I almost downloaded the audio just to include it on the episode. That, you know, there's a lot of talk about worst national anthems and, you know, who did it. Fergie's one that pops in my mind recently as being right. just God awful. Yeah. But I, I honestly think this is the worst one I've ever heard for my life. And to think that she's an actual recording artist. Oh, I that know. is depressing. Let's let's just listen to the very end. For the land of the free. Beautiful run. And the home of the brave. <laughs> I mean, Josh, if you're one of the people that's there and you're hearing this, uh -huh. like, how do you react when it's over? I think you look at the person you're there with and you're like, what the hell was I mean, that? Do, do you clap? Because I don't yes, think that you really deserves applause. You, you clap, whether it's a sympathy clap or whether it's <laughs> patriotism it be, or, you know. I feel like it would be much more meaningful if there was just silence when it ended and then a slow clap slowly built out of that. Yeah. Now, just before we recorded, Chris, I don't know if you saw, but the singer issued a statement saying guess. that I, I didn't see it, but let me guess. She was sick. Her in-ear monitor was not working very well. And yeah, she just wasn't feeling it. She said, I'm not going to bullshit y'all. I was drunk last night. <laughs> I'm checking myself into a facility today to get the help I need. It was not me last night. I apologize to MLB, all the fans, and this country I love so much for that rendition. I'll let you all know how rehab is. I hear it's super fun. And here I am, Josh. I don't believe it. I honestly don't. Well, I believe I think, that she was drunk. Oh, I don't even know if she was drunk. I, I think it's one of those things, Josh. Anybody can sound good in a studio. They yes. can. But well, look at us. I mean, God, even we sound <laughs> decent in a, stu in a studio. But when you have 100 takes and auto-tune and all the production that goes into modern music right. especially, right. anybody can sound good. We could turn around and start a band tomorrow and it could sound decent. Singing live is a completely different thing. You can't be hidden by auto-tune and all those things that make you sound better. Right. I think that she really just got exposed. I think she had in her head that she was good enough to do this and reality set in <laughs> because there's Josh, there's plenty of people that are drunk all the time that are good singers. It's That's not true. like all of a sudden they forget how to sing. That's a good That's point. That's not yeah. like a side effect of alcohol. <laughs> so I don't believe it. She may check herself in just for cover here, but I think this is her trying to save her career at this point. Well, you might be right. And the national anthem is not an easy song to sing. No, it's not. It's, I mean, yeah. you gotta. I mean, you gotta be pretty darn good to pull right. it in and make it sound right. But you're right, though. I mean, even if you're drunk, you can sing it better than that. Hey, if it's anything that I remember from college, I always sound better when I'm drunk. I so, believe that. <laughs> I mean, I do. So, 
Fair enough. Anyways, Josh, I didn't know we were going to talk about this, but let's pivot, get back to the actual Crap Vegas thing and let people know how to get a hold of us. You can send us an email. That is podcast at crapvegas.com. You can join us on our Facebook page. That's crapvegas.com slash Facebook. You can leave us a voicemail. That's crapvegas.com slash voicemail. Or the easiest way is always going to be on Twitter. X. He's at Vegas Duffy. I'm at Small Whale 13. Or the show page is at Crap Vegas. Josh, before we get into the meat and potatoes of this episode, there is something I thought we should talk about for a very short period of time. You and I came up with the idea of launching a database of Las Vegas hosts and their ratings. It's something that I don't think really exists on the internet right now. You'll get a random... Not that I've seen. I mean, you'll get random feedback on a host here or there if you search message right. boards or somebody can share anecdotally their firsthand experience with their person. But I don't know of another place on the internet that you can go to see a bunch of host reviews from different properties and multiple users' feedback all in the same place. So we said, hey, let's create this thing. We sent it out to our patrons first to get some initial reviews back just to have a starting point so I could start mm-hmm. building the database. I think we have enough now at this point to make it work. The pages are created. I've put the information together. And now you guys can all go check that out. It's cvhosts.com, cvhosts.com. Or if you go to crapvegas.com, you'll see a link on the top of the page and that will take you right to it. We'd love to have you go over there, leave your feedback on your host. We especially need reviews of Caesars properties. I don't know why, Josh, but it seems Crap Vegas listeners are not Caesars people overall. I know there are some for sure. And I'm sure we'll get some more now that people are more widely publicizing this. We'll get some Caesars hosts. But yeah, definitely some Caesars hosts. I don't think we have Fountain Blue yet, although I'm going to put my host in hopefully soon. But we need some Ooh, Fountain so Blue hosts. Know, even though these are anonymous <laughs> reviews, and I should mention that, all these reviews are anonymous. Your name, email, none of your information will be attached to any review. So you will have complete anonymity as long as you don't say something in your review that gives away who you are. Right. Don't say, I was last there on June 12th, stayed in room 4753. <laughs> and, and I mentioned it host. on the show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't say that. <laughs> that might be a little bit too specific. But leave your general comments. Give us the grades that we asked for on there. We'll get it uploaded onto there. I'm really excited about this feature. I think it's going to come in handy for a lot of people. It's not behind a paywall or anything. It's available to everybody. Just do us a favor. And if you have a host or a PCS at MGM that you like, leave us a review so we can put it on there and other people can benefit from your information. And part of the reason we're doing this, and we've kind of talked about it before, we know a lot of our listeners aren't hosted players and Mm -hmm. some are that already have hosts. But if you are reaching the level where you think you might get a host or you're trying a new property where you don't have a host, as I've talked about, I have, you know, looked on LinkedIn and looked on every place I could think of to try and find a host. And oftentimes just picked at random and sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. But If you want to get a head start on just knowing some of the features of hosts or at least what people think, and maybe you decide that person might work for me, that's a, this is a great resource for that. Absolutely. And Josh, I'm thinking if I'm going to a property, even if I am a hosted player and I'm going to a property I haven't been to, what I usually do, I go to their website, Mm -hmm. I look at their pictures and I typically try to pick somebody that looks the friendliest and like they'd be the most helpful. Right. That is a horrible way to pick a host, (laughs) even though that's what I do. You're much better off hearing from somebody that's experienced them. I mean, if you go to our page on the host uh, on the host database for Bellagio, you'll see three hosts with reviews on there today already. Two of them look super friendly. One of those people that looks super friendly is probably the worst host I've ever had. <laughs> and so I would not encourage using him. So we're hoping that this database gets built up pretty quickly. We encourage you to go cvhost.com, leave your feedback on your host on there, and we'll keep building this thing. And we have a lot of goals for this in the future to keep expanding on it. And one thing, Chris, somebody raised a concern with me that I wanted to ask you what you thought of. They were worried that, you know, what if somebody says something really bad about the host and leads to the host getting fired or something like that? I guess it depends on what it is from my perspective. Anybody that has a host that's been terrible enough that your comments (laughs) could get them fired, you probably should have already shared that with the team at that casino anyways. And my thinking is also... This is really no different than any other essentially social media outlet that you, you might put those same concerns on Facebook or on Twitter or, you know, who knows what. This yep. is just an extension of that. It's just something else that's, that's available online. 
similar to ratemyprofessor.com or whatever that website is, there might be bad things that come in, but I mean, that's is, life though. And yeah. that's, it's an honest review of somebody. I'm not telling anybody to leave false reviews. In fact, I even put a little disclaimer on there asking you to please certify that these are truthful <laughs> right. and honest. But that being said, Josh, I mean, this is just real life, right? You could get a negative review on something, you know, about your job at work. And I could get nah. one and pretty much anybody working in any public facing position could get one. Right. I mean, God, that's the whole point of Yelp. We're not telling you to go to Yelp and do it. We're just asking you to share your feedback here. I have no sympathy in those situations, Josh. This is something that they're getting paid for. The company's hiring them. If they're bad enough that you're leaving a comment like that, they can get them fired. They probably already should have been fired anyways. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not concerned about that at all. But if you have reservations, don't leave your review. And if there's something, though, that seems more personal, like it's attacking them or like doxing their information, like their personal information, that will not get posted. I will flag that in a heartbeat and it won't get up. All the reviews that are left are reviewed by me before they go on the website. So I uh, don't be concerned about anything like that. That stuff will be blocked. But yeah, it should be it should be super fun. It's already interesting with the number we have just to see the different opinions that people have of their hosts. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Josh, let's get into previous episode feedback. We received an email from Alicia. She said, hello, gentlemen. First of all, a big thank you for the show. Once a week, I have an hour commute for work and always save you guys for the drive. I just listened to your most recent episode about your trip to Venetian and had a couple questions. You ready, Josh? Yep. Okay, question one. I know you guys dabble at slots. What would be your average coin in for a day? Well, Alicia, that's a really good question. And we talked a little about it on our last Patreon show, but mine varied from my experience at Venetian to my experience at Aria. I kind of stepped up my slots playing at Aria. But my coin in per day at Aria on the last trip, which we'll talk about as we kind of go into this episode a little bit, was about 40000 a day. So that's pretty high. It wasn't yes. as high as Venetian, but probably 20, maybe, I would say. Yeah, I mean, which is pretty darn significant. Josh, I would say I'm probably closer to the 15 to 25,000 range a day on coin in. But I will say, yes, we do recognize that is a very large number. And there are plenty of hosted slot players that are averaging 10,000 a day and perfectly right. happy at that level. Right. And obviously, we're playing a heck of a lot more craps than we are slots. But it's just something we do to break up at the day. But yes, we typically do it at higher denomination. Right. Question two, Josh. What level of play is Venetian looking for to host you? I don't know that I've actually talked to our host specifically about that. I would say it's similar to most properties at that level. I don't know for sure about coin in. I would say your guess is probably good, Chris, a 10,000 a day coin in for hosting. And then a craps player or a table games player, probably a rating of in the 200 range, I would say. What do you think, Chris? Yeah, I was thinking anything north of 200, three, four hours a day, you're, you're probably good to get a host there. Yeah, I think that's fair. Final question, Josh. What is your go-to place at Venetian for a sweet treat? Well, that's a really good question and my favorite question, Alicia. Let's see. My favorite place right now is actually the little bakery at um, Cafe Lux. I love okay. those peanut butter cookie sandwiches. They're, they're my jam right now. I'm still getting into all the different options at Venetian. One of the cool things is you have so many you sweet treat options. There's a sugar store. It's like a sugar factory. I don't think that's the name of it that mm -hmm. have, you know, you can buy your chocolate covered nuts and all the kind of those kind of sweets. If that's your thing, there's gelato places everywhere. Yes. What about you, Chris? Do you have anything that you're thinking of? I, I'm kind of staying away from sweets right now. So I, I hate to think about something like this because it's tempting me. <laughs> I will say I would love to go grab a donut from Donutique. Oh, right. Um, yeah, they yeah. are so good right in the middle. Josh is right. There's a Bouchon Bakery there that's amazing and has plenty of great options. The Grand Lux has their little bakery on the side that you can just walk up to. You don't have to sit down. You can take it to go with Cookies you. Cookies and cakes and yeah. Oh yeah, there's gelato inside the food court. There's another better gelato place out in the, in the walkway between Venetian Palazzo. Oh, yeah, you got so many options for sweets there. It's hard to pick one, but plenty of great options. Thanks, Alicia. Great questions. And I don't think we've talked about our coin in on slots before. So thanks for asking. We also received an email from Jonathan. Jonathan says, Chris and Josh, amazing call on Mac King. I went this week as a result of your review and I was not disappointed. You are right. I've never seen a show with such a diverse audience age wise. I do think they need to change the seating as it is an ideal, but Mac's talents and personality more than made up for it. Thanks again for the show, Jonathan. Thanks, Jonathan. You're right. I mean, Chris had seen Mac 
many, many, many times. This was my first time. Had a great time, as we said. We don't need to kind of belabor it. I'm glad you went and gave him a try. It's such an inexpensive show. And I thought Chris's point on the last episode about it being a perfect thing to do in the afternoon before you Mm -hmm. go to dinner, before an evening show, before evening gambling, before you go clubbing, whatever it is. (laughs) It's yep. <laughs> it's a just a great way if you're if you're a little hungover, go to the Matt King show and hang out. I agree, Josh. We've really got to talk to him about some sort of sponsorship to deal to get something out of it. <laughs> we need promo codes for Matt King. Okay, Josh. I think that wraps up the feedback. So let's keep it moving. Last episode, we talked about our trip to Vegas. It was the Friday through the Sunday. We were staying at Venetian. We had a great time, except for financially because of the gambling. It was so <laughs> exactly. horrible. But I was ready on Sunday, Josh, to hit the reset button, and we moved ourselves over to Aria for the last two days of the trip. Yeah, we sure did. We weren't sure what time we were going to go over, so I think we mentioned on the last show we had a coffee dice session in the morning at Venetian. Thought we might stretch it out to, you know, one or two o'clock in the afternoon because we can get late checkout, and (laughs) we were ready to go at like 8.30 in the morning. Yep. After coffee dice went terrible, we said, okay, enough's enough. Let's get on moving over there. So we packed up our things at Venetian and headed over to what became the fun part of the trip. But as you'd expect at 830 in the morning or whenever it was, it probably wasn't that early, but 10 o'clock or so when we got over there, our rooms were not ready yet. No, Josh seemed to be holding out hope that they would be, but no, they were nowhere (laughs) near ready at that point. I think, Josh, what time did they actually get ready? Around one? Well, I think I got mine before you did. I think mine was ready, at least according to my like texts and things, somewhere around noon or so. Okay. Yeah. I think noon, one o'clock, that's about the time that those things were ready. They were super nice checking us in. I will say, Josh, that is the busiest I've ever seen the Aria Sky Suites lounge area where the food and drink and everything is. I've never seen that many people before in my life. You're right. In fact, Chris got, Chris was like, I can't handle this. There's too many people in here because it's not a, the check-in area for Sky Suites is not a large area. No, no. It's 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 meant to have like, four or five people in there mo- yeah. at most. And if you've got a few families in there with kids and things like that, it fills up pretty quickly. Yeah. And the lounge area where the food and drinks were, every seat and couch and table was taken. I was literally like standing there drinking a bottle of water, le- leaning against a post while Josh was talking to the front desk. Yeah. It's just, you know, when I think of like luxury lounge check-in, I think of more like other winds or even so when we were at Venetian where they have that huge room, people yes. are spread out. We had no problem sitting down on a couch and a chair and it's just peaceful. That was not peaceful. That was cattle call. Yeah. And even there, I mean, I love Sky Suites and we've talked about it, but even their lounge area is a little bit like a cafeteria feel. It doesn't feel very luxurious. Well, I mean, I think that's the whole thing about Aria in general. It's not luxurious. Yeah. It's modern. It's technological. And it's just, yeah, it's not luxurious. Anyways, Josh, I know that we dropped our bags off because we didn't have rooms ready and we started with a crapless session. I don't know why we picked that to go first, but it went pretty darn well. Well, I think the reason we picked it is because we had had a good crapless session over at Palazzo the day before. And I think we we thought we were inspired. We we know that crapless is the way to go. And as it is, it turned out to be a really nice session. It was. Yeah. And we had a great crew while we were playing. We did. We had some of our, our favorite dealers. We had Tony. We had Todd. We had, is his name Eddie, Chris? If I got that memory right. I was going to give him another name, but I don't, uh, <laughs> don't want to offend the guy. So uh, I sure, think Eddie it's Eddie. It We're going to go with Eddie. <laughs> really nice crew. We saw Jeff. He wasn't our box, but one of the, uh, the boxes that we know that came over and said hello to us. Just a really great crew. And we had a fantastic crapless session. I think one of the, we didn't hit the all tall small, but we had our two and 12 up to 200 each, which is pretty, you know, it means it hit at a hundred for us at least. Yeah. I remember having a pretty decent role on the crapless table, which is always a nice thing when it's going well there. Yeah. It was good to see Jeff. He usually works in the evenings from what I thought, but he said he's now switched on to day shift and I know he's a listener of the show. So Jeff, thank you for all your help this weekend, even though you didn't give us much, but that's okay. <laughs> we saw you. We, waved. Yeah, we saw you there. I we think waved. he was, a, he was at a reserve table. <laughs> he was. In fact, it was half reserved. Remember that? Yeah, we actually played on the other half of it, and that was a big mistake. I asked if it was the side with the chips on it or the other side that was reserved. but (laughs) You thought that was a lot funnier in your head than it actually was. It's still funny in my head. (laughs) (laughs) See, there you go. So we finished up the crapless session, Josh. I'm sure we played a couple slots just to kill a little bit of time. 
but your room was ready. Mine was getting ready at the same time. I know you got checked in and was there a amenity basket waiting for you? Well, so when I had booked the room with our PCS, I had mentioned that this was going to be my birthday trip. And it's, uh, Josh, it's pronounced <laughs> birthday. <laughs> I did that on purpose just for you. Yeah. Just to and clarify. Just, yeah, exactly. And so I got to my room. It's like one o'clock or so. And I got the message that my room was ready. And I get there and not only is there an amenities basket, Chris and I usually get and oftentimes get a little basket of, you know, nuts and sugar cookies and and drinks and yeah, some some waters and things. But I had a beautiful birthday cake. I had balloons. I had two bottles of Vuv Cluco, however you say it, champagne. Mm -hmm. And I texted Chris and I was like, look what I got. (laughs) <laughs> and and I what am I going to do with it? I had not a single piece of that cake. I don't know how much you ate of it. One piece. <laughs> there you go. I do, I do believe you were able to pawn off the champagne on somebody though, right? Yeah, I was able to give the champagne away. So that was a good thing. But it was, it was a wonderful gesture and I had totally not expected it. Because last time I, I think I'd had a birthday trip since and there hadn't been anything. I don't know what the... But I wasn't expecting anything. He did do the same thing for my wife on her birthday, whatever it was, a year and a half ago or something. But uh, I wasn't expecting anything. He knew when I set up this trip that it was going to be just me. So super nice of him. And if you go to cvhost.com and look at uh, MGM PCSs, you may find somebody that you want to contact in the future. That's right. (laughs) So anyways, Josh, you got to your room. You had an amenity basket. I got to mine. I didn't have one yet, which was a little surprising. But the room had only been ready for a short period of time. But honestly, Josh, Sunday, from what I remember, we didn't have a lot of free time. No, we had a lot of stuff planned. Yeah, we were going to go. We'll talk about it. We're going to go to dinner and then the show. And so we had dinner at STK. But before we went to dinner, I had to go pick up our tickets for Lady Gaga. Mm -hmm. And I had to look up how that was done. And I had to go to their MGM rewards desk and they were actual paper tickets. So I was just strange nowadays. Yeah, I wasn't expecting either. I was texting Chris and he said, are they good seats? And I said, I don't know if they're good seats or not. And then I looked at the face value of the tickets and I'm like, I think they're probably good seats based on the face value. We'll talk about that in a minute. First, let's talk about dinner, Josh. You had never been to STK before, correct? Nope. So we went to STK knowing Josh hadn't been there before. I'd been there a couple different times. I told him, Josh, it's a steakhouse that's more like a club. (laughs) Don't have as high expectations about like service, but hopefully it's really good. I thought the service was pretty good, except. We talked before mm-hmm. about Delmonico and, you know, we never had to wait for our water glasses to get filled up or anything like that. It wasn't quite as good at STK. We, I think, I don't think anybody came by to fill up our water. I mean, they did mine, but I'll say that, I mean, it got empty multiple times. Does it matter? No, but the difference between Delmonico and STK service wise is that Delmonico, you'll never have a crumb on the table. It will right. immediately get wiped away. Right. Your drink glass will never get below half full. If you need a refill, They'll come by immediately on your alcohol if it's getting low and ask if you need anything. Right. At SDK, it's kind of the opposite. Crumbs are left all over. I felt like we were jammed into a two-person table way too close to the group next to us. Yeah, the tables were close. I didn't like that. Service, yeah, just not as good. Josh actually drank his whole drink and never even got offered a refill. That's the thing, right? I had my pink alcohol and nobody ever came back saying, do you want a second? And I would have had a second. Yeah, they just didn't offer that being said, I thought the food was good. They have really good bread, which is always oh, nice. The bread was awesome. Josh, I know you were a little upset about the way your steak was cooked, and so was I. Yeah, it wasn't. I don't know if I was upset, but so Chris orders his steak medium. I order mine I medium well. Don't don't throw me hate. But <laughs> loser, <laughs> it's not. Put some ketchup I'm not on saying it too, well Josh, done I mean. and butterfly it. I'm just saying <laughs> okay because I don't like it super pink. I don't mind kind of medium ish, but I don't want it any less than that. So sometimes okay. I order medium well. Well, I think mine came more on the well side and Chris's came more on the medium well side. They were both overdone a little bit. It wasn't bad. It just wasn't quite as good as Delmonico. I will say, though, I had this, I think it was sweet corn pudding or some sort of corn yes. pudding as a side. It was phenomenal. Yeah. No, the sides were great. The bread was great. The steak was fine. It just yes. wasn't cooked properly. Yeah. If I remember correctly, we didn't have dessert. Nope, we didn't. So we were talking about what the difference was between how we would, when we might go to STK versus when we might go to Delmonico. Mm -hmm. And I think Chris is right. It is a little more of a clubby feel to it. Just a little, the ambiance is very different than, than Delmonico, which is a traditional kind of 
businessy steakhouse in a way. And yeah, if I'm if I'm in just company with friends and things like that, and I don't care about having the best meal ever, the ambiance at SDK is great. People watching is fun. Watching the cocktail servers is fun. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, there's there's plenty of visuals that make it well right. worth going to. I love the music. I think it's really fun. I do wish the tables were spread out a little bit more so you had a little bit more privacy in your conversation. Because, I mean, there were things, Josh, I didn't even want to say because there were people so close right. that I didn't want them overhearing certain things that we were talking about. Chris, am I remembering right? There's also There were also some TVs around, like we could see some soccer games going on, or am I misremembering that? Yeah, there were some TVs on the outside, yeah. and we were seated right next to the bar in, in that area in the front. So, yeah, I mean, there was a lot of TVs going around. So, yeah, you know, you could absolutely watch one of the Copa America games while you were there. But still a really good meal, and I'll go back there again. If This is not a, not a negative at all. Just not quite as good a steak as we had at Del Monaco. No, it's fun. It's just, it's a place that if you're going, I think if you're younger, it's a much better steakhouse to go to than some of the other options out there. If you really like the club feel and the vibe and all that stuff, it's, it's awesome. And I, I do like it. I do like going there. Me too. But no, it's, it's not the same level as Del Monaco. Now, one thing we wanted to mention while we were at SDK or while we were in Cosmo, we took a quick swing by the dice tables, Chris. And what did we find? They had six tables open, which was really nice. Every one of them, a quarter. Which is interesting. This was a Sunday evening. So not bad at all for a Sunday evening. Six tables is a lot going. Yeah, I thought it was a lot of tables. I was a little surprised they didn't have one or two $15 games mixed in because, Josh, it's very common when I go through Cosmo. They always have a bunch of tables open, but usually a lot of those craps tables are empty. And I don't know if yeah, a lot of it is true. just the minimums, yeah. but every time we've gone over there together for any reason, there's always three or four tables completely empty at a quarter, just begging players to walk up. But as soon as we finished dinner, Josh, we were off to Dolby Live to see Lady Gaga. And what an exciting experience it was, starting from the moment that we walked up just to show them our tickets. Oh, yeah. So we, we had, you know, special tickets and Chris was looking at the map to see where our tickets were. Chris mm -hmm. first pulled up the, the T-Mobile arena thinking we were at T-Mobile. I was thinking it was at T-Mobile <laughs> in my head. I guess I couldn't remember that it was at uh, Dolby Live. I'd much prefer, I prefer to be at Dolby Live, though, Josh. It's a much better place to see a show. Well, and as it turns out, our tickets were much better at the Dolby Theater than they would have been at T-Mobile. <laughs> that's true, yeah. <laughs> because we were like, at T-Mobile, these tickets don't seem very good. This, yeah, this isn't a that's good okay. section. <laughs> so we got, to, we got to the theater, and we were looking at our tickets, and we found out that we got to go through this, what, a VIP-ish area? Yeah, we tried to go through the normal line, and they skirted us to the side. No, 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 you need to come over here to the VIP line, which was really cool. And so we had a person that was going to take us to our seats, you know, an usher that was going to take us to our seats. And there were two ladies in front of us. Mm -hmm. And Chris was behind me or kind of off to the side a little bit. I could see the usher a little better. And he was kind of making eye contact with me, like, please come ahead without mm -hmm. saying it directly. And Chris wasn't getting that. Chris kept standing back wanting the ladies to go first, which was very gentlemanly of you. <laughs> Well, I mean, they were two ladies probably in their 60s. Right. I was trying to be polite, Josh. I was like, no, 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 go ahead. We have no rush. You're fine. And, the usher and Josh kept is looking at me like, like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm oh, sorry, I'm being polite. What do you want? The usher kept looking at me like, please come with me. <laughs> <laughs> so finally, we got, we got ahead. He made it clear. And I kind of signaled to Chris, we're supposed to follow him first. And then he's going to take us to. So he took us to our seats, Chris, and then on the ladies went. So let's talk about our seats. Josh, I don't think there's a better seat in the whole theater. I'd been there a couple of times before. We were dead center in the 200 section, the second section, elevated on a raised platform with a couch and a table front of that section. So there's mm -hmm. nobody in front of us. There is not a single person in our sight line between us and the stage. We are 50 feet from the stage, but perfectly elevated so that we have no interruption at all. Yes, and with waiter service, which was fantastic. Yes. And one of the things, so there are, there are floor seats in front of us. But the neat thing is when those people stood up, if we continued to sit, we could still see the stage Lady Gaga because she was right on our level. Mm -hmm. And Chris, I was talking to people that sat in those floor seats. They were really cramped, whereas we had... Oh, we had unlimited space, it felt like. Yeah, in fact, we had retractable armrests, armrests that went up and down between us. And Chris made us put the armrest down between, I did. between us. I but, did. I mean... We were not helping any people believe that we weren't a couple the whole time that we True. were there. So I was like, well, maybe we'll just put that down. No, it was the most spacious seating that you'll have. The couch was super comfortable. The tables, 
anything you could want to drink. I mean, bottle service, just individual drinks, yep. water, snacks. I had a he pink checked, drink. Yeah, you did. I, I had something. I can't remember what it even was, but he checked in on us pretty much every two to three songs, Josh, is mm-hmm. what it felt like about every oh, yeah. 10, 15 minutes. He'd quickly in between songs, make a run down our row, just give us a thumbs up, thumbs down if we needed anything. Super nice guy. Yeah, it was fantastic. And just to give a little context, so I think we mentioned it before. So I booked these tickets or I got these tickets comped through our PCS, through our host. And when I had reached out to set up this trip, you know, I said, I did the birthday trip thing and that angle. And we were talking back and forth about what what show we might want to see and finally got to Lady Gaga. And I said, get us the best seats you can. And one of the things maybe that's difference between dealing with a PCS versus a host is he had to check with his manager to see what yes. level tickets he could give me. So I didn't know if they were going to be any good or not. And it turns out we must have rated pretty, pretty well because these tickets were exceptional. You know, and Josh, we, we talked about it a lot while we were there, but I think this is the difference between us at MGM versus us at something like Wynn. Yes. At Wynn, if we ask for tickets to see Awakening, we're <laughs> in the second to last row in the middle of a section. <laughs> Couldn't even get a VIP seat, even though they're empty. But when you're there, there i'm not i'm not joking there couldn't have been a better seat than what we no, had these were amazing and we were surrounded by people that look like far bigger gamblers than we will ever be i will say that overall just talking about the show itself and not the seats and the drinks and stuff the show was absolutely fantastic i think this is her what fifth or sixth different round of shows that she's done out yeah, there Yeah, something like she, that. she she alternates between her jazz show and her pop show The jazz show was amazing. The musicians were super talented. She had great energy. And quite, I mean, she can just sing, Josh. I mean, there's just no way around it. Oh, man. She is just a ridiculously talented singer. Josh, I didn't see an an empty seat in the whole place. No, the theater was full. This residency, I think, has now ended. There were just a few shows left when we went. And yeah, it was packed. She is an amazing performer. And there's a, there's a point where she sings without a microphone. That's super cool. Yes. It's, it's just phenomenal. A great show. I hope that she comes back with the pop show at some point. I think it left after COVID, Chris. I don't think she's had the pop show since COVID. Mm-hmm. And so I hope that that comes back. There's a rumor that she's going to release an album and go out on tour and then come back. So we'll see what happens. I don't know if that's true or not. Absolutely. Would want to go back again. The theater is terrific. It really is. Yep. She was terrific. Yeah, definitely. Next time I have the opportunity, I'll be there in a heartbeat. And so we got back to our rooms after the show. We didn't do any more gambling because, you know, we're, we're, it was all we could do to stay to the end of a show. <laughs> well, I mean, you, you know, you say that, Josh. I was even telling Josh before. I was like, Josh, I don't know if I can make it to the end of the it's show. True. You know, we'll, we'll see what happens because the show, that is worth mentioning, Josh. The show was supposed to start at 8. Yes, it didn't. At 8.35, she was nowhere to be found. No, no. It was, uh, and we did, there was no opening act or anything. We just sat there. No, fortunately, fortunately we had waiter service, but yeah. yeah. I mean, that made it better, but people were starting to grow fairly restless at that point. Everybody was looking at their watch, like she should be coming on soon. Right. And right. Asking the waiters and the security there. She usually comes on soon. Right. And they were all trying to assuage their concerns. And eventually, yes, she did. But yeah, by the time we got done, it was extremely late. We were both tired, but I will say, Josh, when I got back to my room, I not had, I not only had one gift basket, I had two different gift baskets. <laughs> Chris got two gift baskets. Would you like to explain how that came about? Well, one gift basket, <laughs> keep, keep in mind, both gift baskets, exactly the same. They right. have a set, set <laughs> thing that they give. One gift basket had a card in front of it from our PCS that actually did the booking saying, you know, welcome, have a great time. Thank you, whatever. The other one had a business card from the host that is actually assigned to me at Aria, who I've <laughs> never really had a conversation with and who I've never been thrilled with the times I try to email back and forth with her. So I guess, Josh, all I can think of, because we didn't book through her, all I can think of is that my name popped up on her list of right. her players that were there for those <laughs> days. And she's like, well, I guess I better send something up there. Now, I have a host at, at Aria also, not the one that Chris has. Uh-huh. I didn't get a second gift basket. <laughs> so I just got that. the one from our PCS with the cake and champagne and all that stuff. So it's, it was a trade-off. But yeah, Chris sent me a picture of two gift baskets. And I'm like, it what was the? pretty funny. Yeah. Okay, Josh. So we move on. It's Monday morning. We had a coffee dice session. I think that was the most fun thing that we did the whole week that yes. we were there. It felt like. Yeah. Um, because I, there's so many listeners that joined us 
to play with us, just to stop by and introduce themselves and say hello. I mean, we saw person after person. It was great. Yeah, I think we already mentioned Boring Jack and Jordan that we saw over at Venetian. We yeah. saw Jeremy, Dan, Matt, Trenum, Greg, Joyce and Jason stop by and they made a special trip over just to come and give us a hug and say hello. Uh, yeah. We saw Marilyn, which we'll talk more about Marilyn, but just saw tons of people and a rarity for the Crap Vegas Crap Sessions. This Coffee Dice session with listeners was a winning session. It was beyond a winning session. It was terrific. I know on the last episode, we talked about your great role at mm-hmm. Venetian, Josh, in the high limit. This was better than that. I mean, it's just a terrific series. And it, it wasn't even just one shooter had a great role. Right. There was like six good roles in a row, back yes. to back to back to back to back. And when we started there, there was maybe one or two other people on the table. And all our listeners started kind of crowding on our side of the table. By the time we were done, Josh, the table was as jam-packed as could possibly be. I mean, we tripled up our money pretty easily by the time it was all done. Yeah. We hit the all tall small. Just, I mean, just an awesome, awesome time. Right. It was fantastic. And we should mention this was regular craps. This wasn't crapless. This was ordinary, regular, good old craps. And yep. I can't remember if I was shooting or if whoever, one of our listeners was on the other side of you. I can't remember who, if it was Trenum or who it was, but somebody was shooting and this was in the middle of this terrific role. And Chris got stuck doing lessons with this Australian couple talking to him about craps. Oh, yeah. It wasn't ideal by any means, but some space opened up next to us. And, and she wasn't Australian. She was American. But her boyfriend was Australian. And she walked up and she's like, hey, you look like you know what you're doing. Not the first time I've heard that. <laughs> and she said, hey, can you teach him how to play? And Josh knows I just always say yes, because I want to get right. new players into the game, even though I really do not want to help them. <laughs> um, but he walked up next to me and I taught him, you know, which bets he should make, started him off on the pass line, eventually had him add a six or an eight. And then he had both towards the end. I mean, he couldn't have come up at a better time. Josh no. he was in the middle of some of the best roles we've had in a very long time. She kept bugging me. Oh, you're so, so thank you so much for helping him. And <laughs> all this other stuff. God, it was horrible. It caused me to miss bets I was going to make and let things fall that shouldn't have fallen because I was too busy trying to help them. And that's one downside to Ari is that their dealers aren't as good as at places like Win. So right. if a bet falls, they don't say anything. They're just like, oh, next time, which is very annoying. But uh, that's what happens there. There, God, there was times, Josh, we had no odds and points were hitting. Yeah. Hard ways weren't getting put back. Bets weren't getting pressed properly. And I was, was trying to kind of keep track of Chris's a little bit as best I could while yeah, he was talking to this help. person. Yeah. And every once in a while, I put some of his chips in my rack just as the fee for oh, I'm it. I'm sure you did. It probably cost yeah. me a couple grand <laughs> while I wasn't paying attention. But Josh, just an awesome session to have. It was so good to see everybody. It was good to win like that in a session. And it assured that at least the ARIA portion of our trip was going to be profitable. Yes. Yeah. It was, it was enough to cover that, that whole trip, essentially, on the or ARIA side. Yeah, it was great. So thank you for everybody that came out and said, hi, I know Josh has already thrown out, I think, all the names at this point. Thank you again for doing that. That made for a super fun morning. And Josh, by the time that was said and done, we wrapped up, we, we played some slots and some VP but other than that, we were pretty much done for the day. Yeah, I think we might have had one more little session somewhere around. I can't remember if it was medium good or medium bad. It wasn't anything to write home about. Yeah, I think it was uneventful. I do know that towards the end, Josh, I could tell you were growing restless. And we even talked about this on a Patreon episode that came out last week. Josh started to go on tilt a little bit on the <laughs> slot machines. His bet numbers just kind of went up and up and up. I mean, we didn't have too terribly much luck there. I think we pissed away everything that we wanted at the tables on the slot machines overall. So we didn't lose money for that session, but uh, we did break close to even by the time it was all said and done. Yeah. And overall, the Aria side of the trip was much, 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 much better from a gambling perspective than we had over at Venetian. Only for tables. I will say that. That's true. The one, it's the one thing I like about MGM and their system is that when you leave, yes, you can look on their website and they will have an accurate win-loss statement broken down by slots and table games real time. Yeah. So you can get home and say, oh, look, I won X dollars at the tables. That was great. <laughs> oh, look, I gave back all of it at the slot machines. That's not so great. And then some, uh, right? Yeah, so that that was kind of depressing uh, to say the least, but it also let Josh know what his coin in was for the trip. Yes. 
One thing, Chris, I wanted to mention before we wrap up your part of the of this Las Vegas adventure for my birthday mm-hmm. trip, our room at Venetian. We forgot to mention this last time. I had a note. There was one thing, Chris, about our two rooms that was that's worth mentioning. So we had Sky, a Sky Suites penthouse, and Chris, <laughs> of course, Chris went off on the fact again that penthouse on the MGM at Aria is not on the top floor. <laughs> No, in fact, I was on the bottom <laughs> elevator. I was on the 28th floor in a penthouse. <laughs> but you were ahead, You were higher than me on the Aria side. I was higher than you on Venetian. You were higher than me at Aria. True. But one thing we didn't mention about your room at Venetian that I thought was fun, your room at Venetian had a DVD player. Oh, it did. That is 100% <laughs> true. We, I really like the room, but yeah, that, that shows its age a little bit. And like, I almost wanted to call the concierge and be like, Hey, I have a DVD player in my room. Is there room. a selection is there a of place discs? Like, <laughs> that I can rent one from? I mean, is there like a, what a red box kiosk right, downstairs right. on the floor I can swing by? I thought but that was wasn't. worth mentioning because that was the best. And I saw that at Chris's room at Venetian. I'm like, Oh my God, his room has a DVD player in it. You know, some properties, Josh, you can watch Netflix and stuff right on the TV. They have all the modern streaming <laughs> right. apps at Venetian. You get a, you get a DVD you get player. A DVD player. <laughs> I was hoping you'd open a drawer and there'd be a selection of like 1980s and 90s movies. <laughs> 99 uh, cents. Was, yeah, but there was not. Anyway, so it's a Monday afternoon where and Chris is ready to go home. He ended up booking a red eye on Monday. And I think we mentioned he, he, he set, the, was, set the record. It was technically Tuesday morning right. at 1230 a.m. Right. I made it till Tuesday. But yeah, I told Josh, hey, look, I'm just going to go crash in my room for three or four hours, get a little rest in for my red eye at 1230. So I'm not a zombie the next day. And I'm glad I made that choice, Josh, because it, it let me walk away knowing I didn't have to, you know, pay back any markers when I leave that place. I felt like we had given them a good amount of play. And quite frankly, of it, after four days, four full days, I was ready to be home. Yeah, I bet you were. I gave them enough play that they love me now after you. Oh left. yeah. yeah. I, I told you, I cannot <laughs> wait for August 1st to hit when MGM's new offers come out. I've made a bet with Josh on what his free play amount is going to be for next month. He thinks I'm way too high. I think I'm too low. So I can't wait to see. So I don't think I played any craps after Chris left. So Chris, we wound down Monday afternoon, probably did some slots and things like that. And then, and then said our goodbyes. And I was going to have dinner with Marilyn, one of our listeners and patrons at uh-huh. Carbone on Monday night. So I went up and got changed for dinner and met Marilyn. I think I gambled a little bit and then we met up. And this was my first trip to Carbone. And Chris, I know you'd been there before and you kind of weren't all that impressed by it. I wasn't. I know people love it. So maybe it was just a bad experience for me, but I, I didn't personally care for it. Yeah, I think that you, I mean, I'm not to say you're wrong, but I think maybe your experience at Carbone was kind of like our experience at John George, where some people love it, but for whatever reason, the night we mm-hmm. went, it just wasn't, you know, wasn't okay. our thing. Because I loved Carbone. I thought... I had the vodka pasta, their specialty. And That's it their was, specialty, yep. Yeah, it was amazing. I mean, it was just really, really wonderful. Mm-hmm. And uh, Marilyn, I can't remember if Marilyn had something with lobster in it. I think she enjoyed it a lot. We shared meatballs between the two of us. They were fantastic. Not as good as the vodka pasta, but fantastic. I started drinking lemon drops. So did Marilyn. Of course you did. Yeah. I think at dinner I had four, Chris. That's a lot. So for me, yeah, that's a that's a good number. And then we, and then we after we finished dinner, we went off to high limit slots. And that does not sound like a smart idea. <laughs> it was a it was a brilliant idea. <laughs> anyway, so I we played slots and then and then went down the night. I said good night. And the next morning on Tuesday, I played some more slots, which we talked about a little bit on the Patreon show. And that mm-hmm. was it for Vegas. Now let me ask you this, Josh. You say you loved Carbone. Do you like it more than Sinatra? That's a good question. I need to go back to Sinatra again. Maybe when we're there for your birthday, we try Sinatra again. So I have a, you know, a closer comparison. I thought that vodka pasta dish was amazing. And yeah, it's a really good, they're very close in my eyes. I don't know if I could pick right now. Okay. I was just curious how you compare them. I want to try it again to see, but they're, they're, they're really close in that way. That's a good question. Okay. I mean, I always like Sinatra more than Carbone. But I'm one of those weird people. I actually prefer Allegro over Sinatra. Maybe it's because it's slightly more casual at Wynn, but I've always found their meals to be excellent, and I kind of prefer the atmosphere. Oh, interesting. Okay, well, yeah, that's a yeah, good question. I'm different like that, though. I don't like the super of fanciest places, typically, right. so I like to drop down that level of grandeur <laughs> just a little bit if we can. But I, I remember the ambiance at Carbone being pretty nice, too, so that was fun. 
one thing I do want to say, so our bill with each of us having three or four cocktails and two main dishes and then a split main dish, I think we may have shared a salad. I can't remember. But anyway, our bill was still about what you and I paid for our steak dinner. So the, it, it was less expensive in a way. I mean, I heard about how expensive Carbone is and things like that. Mm-hmm. And obviously, if you add a bottle of wine and things like that, but for it's definitely less expensive than steak. Okay. I was, I was imagining you saying splitting a meal like that, like almost like a lady in the tramp. There's a piece of spaghetti <laughs> that you guys are sharing. That's what's coming into my mind. It wasn't now, spaghetti. So. It was, you know, what's, what's, I don't know my pasta is. What's the pasta? You couldn't, there wasn't a way for us to do that. Okay. Fair enough. So Josh, I am glad that you guys had a great time. Sorry I couldn't be there with you. But that being said, after the break, we'll answer some listener questions. We're going to announce that new contest and how to get involved. And I think the CV Big Wheel is going to return. So stick around. Josh, Zorkfest 2024. It's coming up. It's November 1st through 3rd at Horseshoe Las Vegas. And there was a big announcement this week. Yeah, Gary Leff. I think that's how you say his name is returning to Zorkfest 2024. In addition to blogging about his miles and points obsession, he's at viewfromthewing.com. He co-founded insideflyer.com, a place for frequent flyers to meet and learn using the latest technology. Gary serves as the chair of the nominations committee and MC for the Freddy Awards and was named one of the world's top travel specialists by Condé Nast for his award booking service, bookyourawards.com. Well, that sounds like somebody we'd want to go listen to, Josh. Sounds like he's got a lot of knowledge. So if you want to get some tickets, early bird discount tickets are available, $100 off the normal registration fee. So get over there and get registered. It's travelzork.com slash Zorkfest to get signed up. And I did want to say, Chris, we got uh, we got called out. Well, not we. I got called out last time for not mentioning a certain podcaster. I guess you can call him a podcaster, influencer, kind of an influencer, Adam Bauer for our podcasters after dark panel at Zorkfest. I didn't mention Adam. So Adam gets a special shout out on this week's ad. Wow. I mean, that's, (laughs) that's really going to help sales knowing Adam's there out of all people. I think Michael probably did better when Adam wasn't mentioned. (laughs) (laughs) So if that's your cup of tea, go check them out. In all seriousness, the podcasters after dark panel is going to be a fantastic time. As I said before, it's the 360 Vegas gang. It's the, you can bet on that gang. It's me. It's Michael Mason trigger. It's Danny Vegas introvert. And of course, Adam Bauer and probably others that I'm forgetting that I'll get called out for. Again, that's travelzork.com slash Zorkfest. Okay. Listener question time. We received a question from patron and also CV Facebook moderator, Sean. Hi guys. A lot of people see Josh and Chris's pictures from the craps table and ask about chip management when playing. I mean, in the rack. I'm curious how you keep your chips organized when you play. I always see Josh's <laughs> picks and he has some of his chips separated by dollar chips or some group together. Is there a method to the madness? Inquiring minds want to know. So if you've seen, if you follow me on Twitter or Chris on Twitter or us sometimes on the Facebook group, you'll see that occasionally I'll post pictures of, usually it's a good session at the craps table because who wants to see an empty rack? And <laughs> it's not much to see. <laughs> it's a question I get asked a lot is, what the hell is going on with your chips? <laughs> I ask that question all the time. In fact, I've told Josh many times, he gives me like <laughs> severe anger when I see his rack. I don't like it at all. <laughs> so different people have different superstitions for how they manage their chips. We played with one player as a listener. I can't remember his name at the moment, but would hold all his chips up his arm as he was playing yes. all his winnings. He would hold them up his arm, which was bad on a good roll because then he, I think he dropped a whole bunch on the table at one point. Anyway. Oh, well, hey, Dr. Mike does that too, Josh. Yeah, Dr. Mike holds him in his hand, I think. There's all sorts of... So mine isn't so much a superstition. So I try and on the top rack, if you know craps table, you usually have two racks in your space. And on the top one, it's usually my buy-in separated by color. So if I have purple chip, they're kind of bunched together and then black, green, and so on with some sort of spacing in between some sort of dollar amount. Like maybe I've got all the purple chips and then I might have a thousand of hundreds or something like that spaced out. Then it gets a little rougher. I -hmm. try and, and during a roll, anything that I've collected, I put on the lower rack in whatever way it's given to me. Usually now I might try, I might try and separate greens and so on, but oftentimes it's, especially if the roll is going fast, however it's given to me, but that's a way for me to keep track roughly what I've taken back on the roll. So I have an idea of, am I, even on the roll ahead and that, and then that's kind of how it goes. So 
If you look at my rack and it's a busy, you know, we've had a grid session. It's just everything that's collected in all jumbled up mess. Yes. And Josh and I are completely <laughs> different on this. I like my rack to be extremely organized. Even when chips are coming back to me, when we hit a number that I have, I'm immediately sorting correctly into blacks, greens, reds, <laughs> whites. I keep them organized like I think most dealers do, Josh, because this is just our history. That's true. I always keep things in stacks of 20 because that's how a dealer would grab a stack. So that's how I stack them. I'll put a separator between my groups of 20 so that I easily know if it's a stack of black and there's a separator, <laughs> that's 2000. If it's a stack of green, it's 500. Stack of red's 100. I can easily know. I can count my rack typically if I look down in about three to five seconds. <laughs> if you looked at Josh's rack, it would take you about three to five minutes. So I just find that to be more helpful to me. So I, you know, I go with the visually a, just appeasing sort of rack setup, Josh. It's much nicer in my eyes. Yeah, I like that. No, it it's it fits our personalities. That when you think about the when you think about the odd couple, I'm more of the Oscar and Chris is more of the Felix. Yep, not old enough to know the references from the Odd Couple, but uh, I'm sure that's true. Some of our listeners will know, yes. Fair enough. Okay, Josh, we also received a message from Trey. Trey said, hi, guys. I'm at Aria and just found out they will let you buy the 5 and 9 with VIG on win only at $20 or more, but they don't auto buy them. You have to ask. DJ in mode activated. Josh, we have been to Aria a thousand times. We just got back from Aria. We buy the 4 and 10 on every roll. We start off with $100 on the five and nine and not a single person mentioned to this to us, including the dealers that we like and boxes that we like. Yeah, which is the most perplexing thing. And that's something. And first of all, thanks, Trey, for pointing that out. I'd kind of yes. heard that a little bit someplace before, but I think I locked it away in my mind because it hadn't happened to me. And, and it's great to know that we do it now we, I mean, that they do it. We have to ask. But I, I, I'm irritated by the fact that nobody mentioned it to us. Well, I can tell you this, not a single player knows No, nope. because I saw the Except five Trey. and nine bet on consistently all the time we were there right. and not once was there a buy lamb or no, put on we one of those bets we, and paid had we noticed, right. We would have done it. And it reminds me, Josh, I feel like we talked about this on the show like a year and a half, two years ago, because MGM was making a push to offer buy mm -hmm. bets on the five and nine. When right. I went to Borgata right. up in the Northeast in Atlantic city, they allowed the buy on the five and nine and they too never mentioned anything the whole time I was there. Until the last day, I happened to see somebody buy it. And I was like, you can do that? That's right, like, oh, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can. So there has been a push on the MGM side to offer it because I know they offer it in Biloxi. And I know they offer it in, in Borgata up in Atlantic City. Who knows how long they've actually offered this and just nobody has ever actually known to ask. But if anything, Josh, I'm glad to know, but I'm also extremely frustrated because somebody should have said something. Yes, because there are... I think I would play inside, so betting the six, eight, five, and nine without the four and ten much more frequently if I knew that was the case. Yeah, if you could get the free buy, figure yeah, on if win I only. could get the right because yeah. that that changes the game a lot. It does. It makes. I mean, the five and nine on a place bet have a four percent house edge, right? And the five and nine on a buy, what a percent? Percent it's a quarter? Probably a percent and a half somewhere in there. Okay. But I mean, still, but it's a whole yeah, lot it's better a huge than four. Difference. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's just why not get paid at those things? Josh, now Josh would have to learn to keep those bets even. So he couldn't put 75 on. He'd have to put 80 by myself. Yes. So I think that would be a big adjustment for him. But at the same time, thank you for letting us know, Trey. I don't know why, but I have a feeling when we go back next time, they'll say, Oh no, you can't buy that. That's right. I have a feeling that Trey is happen. wrong. I will just see what happens. I'm, but I'm not hundred percent sold. They're going to allow it. Somebody else that has that experience. Let me know. We'll see what happens. Josh, we received an email from Nate. He said, hello from Atlanta. I'm headed to a convention in August and was pleasantly surprised that I could get a comp to room at one of Paris's new balcony rooms. Yeah. It'll probably be a billion degrees, but I'm still excited to check it out. I've enjoyed your podcast and in particular, the knowledge about various comp programs. I've learned that all I really want is a free room and it's cheaper for me to just ask to pay for food and entertainment versus chasing those comps. So I'm quite happy with Caesars, especially given my frequent trips to Cherokee. He's had some really bad luck at craps and a lot of the blackjack by him, Josh, especially at Caesars properties is six to five. So his question is, I can't get down with slots. So what other games would you recommend that you can play for a while with the occasional opportunity to get a big win? He typically budgets $1,500 to $2,000 for a trip. Thanks and keep up the good work, Nate. 
Boy, that's a good question, Nate. First of all, I, I like that you recognize the the whole, what you really want is a free room and you don't want to have to worry about chasing comps mm-hmm. the rest of the way. I, I think that's why I like to stay at Caesars property sometimes is I feel the same way. It just takes a lot of that pressure off. You can sure. play or not play almost to your heart's content and Caesars is going to give you a free room. And if that's all you care about, great. As far as games where you can get that big win, but you don't, you're not thinking crap. You don't want to do blackjack because it's six to five. You don't want to do slots. I mean, you could do it on roulette, but the odds aren't any good. What do you think? Yeah, Chris? I, I mean, you're kind of running out of options here. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, I could, I would say Baccarat, but that's not a game that you're going to get big, big wins on. I mean, if you hit a great streak, just like on a blackjack table, you could, but you're not going to have those big pops. So if you're really looking for the big pops, I guess you need to stick to carnival games. Something like an ultimate Texas Hold'em right, right. or, you know, a, you know, a high card flush or whatever those things are nowadays. Some of those, especially on the progressives and side bets, have some bit pretty big pops that you can get. But at the same time, they do have a tendency to bleed you dry. I mean, um, crapless, if it's there, can be that, yeah. if, you know. Well, that's a, I mean, yeah, that's a good point, Josh. I mean, he could just do the whole 2, 3, 4, 10, 11, 12, play the extremes on a crapless table. Right. Right. Get some big pops. I mean, he was having bad luck at crap, so he's been trying to step right. away from it. But maybe that would be something a little different. You're definitely going to get the big pops, but there's going to be a heck of a lot of variance. Just some thoughts, but great question, Nate. And, and like I say, I really think the comp idea is fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Last question this week, Josh. We got an email from Anthony. Guys, I never hit the all tall small, only the tall or small a couple of times. Last time at the Hard Rock and AC, all I needed was the 11 and of course seven <laughs> out. My question is, ever been at a table where a shooter hit the all-tall small on 10 straight rolls, the perfect all-tall small roll, or any idea on the number of rolls it took Josh to hit the all-tall small at the crapless table? So let's start off with the beginning there, Josh. Have you ever seen anybody walk the ladder and hit them all in a row? No, I haven't seen anything like that. I'm sure it's, I don't know if, I mean, somewhere it's probably happened consecutively in a row, but I'm sure dealers have seen it where a person just hit the number once each number. I'm sure that's happened. I don't think I've seen it. The closest one I know was me. You weren't there. I was at Aria. I hit the all tall small. I never made the point, And I don't think I had many repeaters at all because mm-hmm. I remember it being a losing session. Like I hit the features and I still lost money basically, which is oh, sure. hard to do if it was a good roll. but that's as close. But even then I'm sure I had a few repeaters. Now I have seen talls or smalls hit without repeat. Yes. That, that actually does happen a decent amount. If for some yeah. reason, you know, you know, you'll come out on a yo and then you'll throw a craps 12 and then all of a sudden it goes 10, nine, eight and you hit the tall and you're five yes. rolls in and you just barely established a point that does happen. Hitting them all without repeaters. I haven't seen it. We've come close before, but right. usually it takes a while to get one of those extreme numbers. So there's a couple of repeats in the way. If you're asking average number of rolls to hit the all tall small, I have no idea what the average actually is. From experience, I'd say the times that we do hit the all tall small, it usually happens on a roll that's at least 25 rolls or more. I feel like that too, right? I mean, so if you're, and we've talked about that before, if you hit the all tall small, you probably had an amazing roll anyways, Mm -hmm. because it takes a long time typically to get to that point. But yeah, I feel like if you're going to do that, Josh, there's going to be some points, some come out rolls, some repeats. There's going to be a couple things that get you there where it's probably in at least 20 rolls closer to 30. Yeah, I think that's right. And Anthony, you'll hit it someday. It'll happen. Chris and I have to have trips where we don't hit it at all. And then we have trips where we hit it two, three, four times. This trip was twice, I think. No, at least three times. Was it? Because, yeah, I threw it once. You and threw, I threw it, it once. Palazzo. And right. then we had it happen from another shooter while we were at uh, there we go. So I know we saw it at least three times. So, yeah, it just comes in spurts. We were mad last trip. We didn't see one at all. I don't even think we saw a side, a tall or a small. Yeah, exactly. Uh, last trip. So, I mean, yeah, it's, you know, it just comes and goes. But uh, last question he had, Josh. Second, what's the highest number someone has hit on a fire bet? Any good stories to share? And I think on the show before we've talked about, I have hit a six point fire bet. Yep. It was terrific. I was extremely excited about it. The problem is it's hard to find fire bets anymore. They've disappeared across the country. Yeah. And I never hit a six. I've been in on or through for five, but I never... Again, I wasn't a big fire player because by the time I got into doing those, it was starting to make its way out. So, yeah, even my local Caesars property, that's the only place I could really do the fire bet. It's disappeared from here now. They used to have fire and all tall small on the same tables. That's gone. 
So thanks, Anthony, for the question. We do appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Patreon, Josh. That's patreon.com slash crap Vegas. What's new over there? Well, last uh, Patreon show, last CVP show, we had a fun discussion about, we kind of hinted at it earlier. I went on a little bit of tilt on this trip, if you want to call it that. So we talked a little a bit about little bit. <laughs> a little, a little tilty, especially okay. towards the, especially towards the end after Chris left, we talked about that and kind of more of a, a deep dive. Again, one of those meta discussions on what tilt is and how maybe your gambling partner, if you have one can get you out of it when you're in it, that kind of thing. We also talked about one of us took a little surprise one day trip to Vegas. We talked about that on the Patreon show. Yeah, lots going on over there. So let's welcome all of our new members. That's Alistair S, William N, Donnie K, Dan M, Danica F, Tiffany K, Treebird27, who is also a KCS patron. So thank you, Treebird. And Chris L, you snuck in right before the <laughs> <It's> recording. <true. laughs> Literally, as we were hitting play, your name came across. So congratulations to Chris L as well. Yes. Thank you all very much for joining us on Patreon. It means a lot to us. We take a lot of pride in those shows. We still try and give wonderful, great content on the main shows, but we want to make our Patreon shows extra special as well. Upcoming trips, Josh. It's still on my calendar for August 16th to 18th. <laughs> Chris Staying is wavering for already. My, for Chris's birthday trip. I'm having some familial concerns over those dates right now. <laughs> so I ping Josh and it's like, Hey Josh, if we had to push this back two weeks, would you be cool with that? And Josh said, no, I wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we'll see if uh, Chris and Josh end up there together, August 16th through 18th, or if Josh is there and Chris is there two weeks later, <laughs> which would be great That'd for be the great show, for, but and, well, and a great birthday trip for me to really <laughs> celebrate right. by myself. <laughs> Which happy you know, birthday. You know what'll happen? I won't go to win. <laughs> oh, I know you won't. You'll be at Venetian. So that's even worse. Be, well, I'd split between Venetian and Aria. I oh, think oh, that's right. Just, you got to yeah. go for four or five days anyways. Yeah, right, exactly. But anyway, okay, so, so right now it's, it's somewhere in the end towards the end of August. Yeah. Just keep listening to the podcast and you will hear Josh. We got a message on Patreon earlier today from one of our listeners, Rim, who was asking why the trip calendar isn't on our redesign website anymore. And I answered him, it's pretty simple. I never updated it. So even though it was there, it wasn't accurate. And at the same time, we always talk about our trips on this show at the end of every episode. So you're, you're always able to hear when we're going to be back out there. And we usually plan pretty far in advance to give you enough notice. And if we had a real, you know, tech person who would reach out to announcer guy and get him to record our closing when he says that check the, check the crapvegas.com for our most recent trip, oh, yeah. you know, calendar. I need whatever. to update that, don't I? <laughs> Well, we I'll, to, I'll see. We have to I'll find an announcer guy. Oh no! Well, we, we need to add the casino host database and that, and there's a lot of things to fix, Josh. So, I guess Chris needs to uh, pick up the slack here and get that done. Oh, I'll help try and pick up some of the slack too. You can't carry it alone. Friendly reminder to subscribe and leave a review on your favorite podcasting app, and to visit our merch store. That's crepvegas.com/shop. Our Big Dice Energy shirt is in stock. I've started shipping those out. I've got a lot of really good feedback. It's a super comfortable shirt. I think it's pretty good looking. So go give that a look and uh, get one of those if you want one. Josh, before you spin the wheel, yes. let's tell everyone how they can win a copy of the EA Sports College Football 2025 and a CV prize pack all for free. Am I eligible to win? You are not eligible to win. <laughs> anybody affiliated with the show, including myself, even though I guess I could have just kept it and not given it out. That would have been an option. Uh, but I had already pre-ordered mine, Josh. I ordered, I ordered the game got six months ago, eight months ago, Look at you. the digital deluxe version. It was already downloaded onto my PS5 the other day. I can play now. I'm super excited about it. But if you want to get registered and win your copy of the game, visit crapvegas.com slash EA sports, and you can register there. The entry deadline is Thursday, July 25th, and the winner will be announced Friday, July 26th at 10 a.m. Eastern. We'll put that on our Twitter page. I'm sure we'll put it on Patreon. We'll even put it on the website on that page. You can just go to crapvegas.com slash EA Sports and register. It will just ask you a couple things real quick. Everyone gets a free entry. There's no purchase required. So just go on there, fill out your information. If you do want to get a couple bonus entries, anybody that places an order in our shop between the moment you're hearing this and Thursday, July 25th at midnight, you will receive two bonus entries. So if you do order something, you'll have an opportunity to get up to three. But again, no purchase required. You can get an entry for free just by going to the site and doing that. 
Josh, I can't wait to see who wins. You'll get a little prize pack. You'll get a copy of the game. I think it's on PlayStation 5 is the version that they sent us to give out. So if you're an Xbox person, you either want to win it and maybe trade with a friend, take it to GameStop and (laughs) hey, how much will you give me for this sealed copy? I don't know. But get registered. We can't wait to get that out and we'll ship that out late next week after the drawing happens. And I'm an Xbox person, so I don't want your stupid prize anyway. Okay, take that. Who wants to play on an Xbox? I mean, everybody knows PS5 is far better, Josh. (laughs) That's what I got. Okay, we've made it this far, Josh, so I guess go ahead and give that wheel a spin. Oh, yeah, here we go. It's time to spin the crap Vegas big wheel. Are you ready? You ready? Josh, spin the wheel. Yes, I'm completely ready. Here I go. Sight. So, Chris, oh, this is, I'm glad the wheel stopped here. This is actually, it's not very often that Crap Vegas breaks news. And in fact, we are not breaking news here, but it's news we could have broken. Okay. Do you know what's coming, Chris? No, I think I have an idea because I'm the one that told you about it months before it got announced. Yes, that's exactly right. So when it was officially announced that Wynn's Lakeside Restaurant is closing at the Lake of Dreams to make way for a restaurant called Fiula Mare. I'm going to say that's how it's pronounced. I'm going to, I'm going to go with its Mediterranean seafood. I don't have it in front of me, but without even seeing it, I guarantee you pronounced it wrong, but that's okay. F-I-O-L-A-M-A-R-E. Fiola Mare. Okay. We'll go with, going that. with that. Yeah. See. Okay. But anyway, but yes. so we had a heads up. We had breaking, we had a scoop that we didn't, we didn't publish. So Chris had inside knowledge that Lakeside might be closing. Yeah. Unfortunately, Josh, I I can't share the information that I get. Right. But at the same time, my company and what we do, I typically know about new casinos being built, casinos being remodeled, or restaurants and facilities inside of casinos well before the general public does. I think I told Josh about this four or five you months yeah, ago. It was a long that time this was ago, coming right? Because we got a bid on the redesign of the package that they were putting into the place. So yeah, we, I knew this was coming, unfortunately. Lakeside's always been a super popular spot. Mm-hmm. I think I had a, a quick back and forth, not like negative, just comments back and forth with Michael at Travel Zork about this. He said, you know, a lot of these nicer restaurants and these nicer casinos like to do like a rebranding, refresh every couple of years and start over. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but I'll be interested to see what comes out of this whole thing. And if nothing else, it might make my company some money. So I'm not going to complain. There you go. It's supposed to, the new restaurant's supposed to open in early 2025. It says the Lakeside yes. dining, dining Room will get an update with maritime inspired designs, custom furnishings inspired by classic French and Italian designs from the 1940s and 50s. Yes. And I guarantee you will see a decent amount of wood paneling in there. That's about <laughs> yeah, the only thing go. I can tell you. I know nothing else. <laughs> All right. Let's spin the wheel and see what we got. Okay, Chris, I don't know if you saw this one or not. This is, this is a newsy story, but did you see that Bellagio officially announced the, the project that's coming that we, we hinted at on the Patreon show when we covered the last earnings call? Something Mm -hmm. that might be connecting Bellagio to Cosmopolitan a little bit. No, I didn't see that. Oh, yeah. They announced that they're going to be expanding. So according to documents submitted to Clark County, a new project, which is being called Project Mojave. Is it Mojave or Mojave? I think it's Mojave. That's how I've always said it. But at the same time, this also sounds like an Apple, you know, new version of their operating system. (laughs) So So (laughs) Project Project Mojave would include 400,000 square feet of retail and entertainment space on the south side of their property. That's what we need, more shops. Let's get as many shops as we can possibly get. Three floors, 138 feet high above ground level. They're going to have to remodel the the interior of the Bellagio lobby a little bit. And they said MGM Resort submitted plans to the county last week for a new luxury retail restaurant and entertainment destination adjacent to the Bellagio along the Las Vegas Strip. We look forward to sharing additional details about this exciting project in the coming weeks and months. I mean, it makes sense timing wise, Josh, two weeks from now, by the time this comes out, Cosmo will officially fall under yes. the bookable MGM options. You can reach out to your host or you can make, use your offers online. Ooh, if you don't go bo- for your birthday trip, I may stay at Cosmo. I mean, that would be a good option for you because I don't think I would probably stay there for multiple reasons. But I am really excited that they're getting folded into the mix. Right. Especially if they ever refresh the rooms, because they definitely need a refresh at this point. But for somebody like you that's never stayed in one of their balcony rooms. Right. 
you absolutely got to get there. I, I want to. So that may, that may happen, especially if we can't make our trip dates work. Yeah, no, that's pretty exciting. Anything else in the wheel this week, Josh? Let's give it one more spin just to see. Okay, fair enough. Oh, look at this one, Chris. You won't care much about this, but I thought it was fun enough to, to notice. Uh, our favorite place with the mini craps tub, Four Queens. That is where it mm -hmm. is, right? Yeah, Four Queens. Sounds we know right. because we had to insert that in. <laughs> yes. I had to record Four Queens. And Josh, would, <laughs> Josh just randomly cut it into the episode last time. Four Queens announced it's spending $24 million to renovate the rooms in its North Tower. Wow, that's $23.9 million more than they ever spent on that property, it feels like. They were originally built in 1966 and got their last major renovation in the 90s. And their their team said it was time for us to go in, especially for our systems like plumbing and HVAC. They're going to gut it and make it all fresh. And they say they're going to put in some sound installation by the windows to try and reduce the Fremont Street experience noise. So, I mean, that's still my big issue with that place. No matter how much they remodel the rooms, the sound that comes from Fremont Street, I don't care what kind of insulation you have it's not going to be dampened enough. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's not like it's specific to them. I've, I've talked about before how much right. I hate staying in encore rooms that face their day club and night club because you can't sleep. And I used to love the Cromwell, but you can't sleep there if you're on the top two floors because of Dre's up top. There's just, I mean, sound is such a big issue. If you're younger, it's not that big of a deal. My only concern is, Josh, when they drop this kind of money into a remodel of a hotel downtown, what are they going to make the room rates to make it make sense on the back end? Because at the end of the day, it's still the four Queens. So you yeah. can't charge that much. So how much are they really going to do to make it make sense financially? I'm always just curious how the economics of these things work. Yeah, I am too. Although I think 24 million in the grand scheme of things is not all that huge. It's not, for it's a little not. downtown property, it's, it's not, it's not nothing either. I think no, it's, it's 300 for rooms them. in their North tower. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, that's what the wheel has today. Okay, fair enough. Josh, anything else that we need to talk about before we get out of here? No, I am excited for Vegas already. I'll have another trip to Colorado before we go to Vegas, probably. And then uh, Vegas is coming up. Hopefully, Chris decides to join me. Otherwise, I'm going to call on listeners to join me. I mean, it feels like this is my birthday trip. It so is you your birthday should be trip. much more flexible <laughs> in honoring and you know my request to move the dates. It's just like, no, you can't do I mean, I made your week work, Josh, and you I did, stayed I know. for four nights. <laughs> And that is really hard for me to do, but uh, I can, okay. I can go the weekend after the weekend we were supposed to go, but that weekend you can't go. I know you I can't cannot. do that. No, so. I, got, I got stuff planned for that week. You know what's going to happen, Josh? It's going to get end up pushing back to like mid-September and you won't be able to go. Uh, I know. And I'm actually going to be there on my birthday, as people want me to say, <laughs> and you won't be there. And it just, it'll be sad. It will be sad. Oh, one thing I did want to mention before we go. So we had a box at Aria that I forgot to mention. Her name is Jennifer. And this is mm -hmm. when we were playing with all the listeners and we were talking about the show and, you know, this and that. And she's like, what podcast do you guys host? And then, so I started, I told her and she's like, crap. Vegas? Yeah. Yeah. Crap Vegas. And she said, okay, I'll look it up. And, you know, we were talking about the dealers at Aria that know us and that kind of thing. And anyway, we got some more. We may have Jennifer, if you're the, the box at Aria and you're listening now, thank you. See, I was going the opposite direction. I was thinking about certain uh, Twitter personalities that were saying that a very large casino in Vegas that I really oh. like <laughs> refers to us internally as Poop Vegas. <laughs> and I, I really do think we should consider a rebrand at this point, Josh. <laughs> You know what? If it's good enough for them to rebrand Lakeside at their property, then maybe we should consider rebranding ourselves too. We need a refresh, Josh. It's been a couple years. We're getting stale. All right. Is poopvegas.com available? I don't, I, I, I can almost <laughs> guarantee it is. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. I, I think Sean has already got, has already got uh, logos ready for us. I was going to say, he's got branding and everything, <laughs> logos, merchandise. It's all ready to go. So... Uh, Check that out over at crapvegas.com slash shop. Either way, guys, thank you so much for listening this week. We hope you had a good time and we will talk to you soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Vegas, here we come. Thanks for listening to the Crap Vegas podcast. Have you ever been to Vegas? Check out all our recent news and our Vegas trip calendar by visiting crapvegas.com. See you in Vegas. Something a lot of people overlook is home security. <laughs> no, <laughs> wrong. It is. That's not it. <laughs> it is, but that's not <laughs> what we're talking about. <laughs> but we will tease it and say... <laughs>
<laughs> Good what question. Do we do? I, I don't know what we're going to say. <laughs> Jason Joyson stopped by. Jason Joyson. Joyson. Jason, Jason. Joyson. <laughs> <laughs> It sounds like a type of berry. A Jason <laughs> Joyce and berry. <laughs> we had one feature that was particularly noteworthy. Noteworthily. Is that a word? That's not a word. Okay. It was particularly noteworthy. No, see, it doesn't work that way. It was particularly so noteworthily. <laughs> I know. That's what I want to say. I'm not even going to Google it. I'm that confident. <laughs> I'm confident, too. Okay. That there is. Josh, I... What I was saying. Uh, it's too much okay. fun already. Poor me. I get to order yummy pink drinks with chunks of real fruit that guys secretly like but can't order because they'll be made fun of. Ew. They're delicious.